And um, with the multiple choice one, you have two attempts. After your first attempt, you will see the score, but the system won't tell you what you got right or and what you got wrong. You'll just see the score. And if you're on a reattempt, you can. So um, let me just go ahead and start. And of the first time, I'll just uh, answer randomly. Um, so I'll get a terrible score, probably something like two, three out of 10, and, um, and then I will retake. So uh, the system does try to kind of stop you from accidentally starting because you have only 10 minutes. It's a kind of a tight uh, time scale for, you know, 10 question assessment because you basically have one minute per question. So, <laughs> so, um, so when I click on start, there will be this pop up that it has a time limit. Please read it. Don't automatically click start. Make sure you are ready to start when you start. So start. Okay, so I'm just gonna answer randomly. I'll just answer every third choice. By the way, this entire assessment is, um, it, it's a, a multiple choice. And that means there's something very specific. It means there's only one answer. You can choose only one. And that's uh, why this message instructor is available at all so that uh, if you see something and there's something wrong, then you can use this to send me a message. And uh, given the shortness of 10 minutes, this is probably what I would recommend. So if you have a question where you have an issue with, click this to open the window and you know don't write it out while you're still doing the assessment. Finish the assessment so that you are not wasting any time uh, writing out that message because 10 minutes is pretty short. So um, you can submit an end. And after you've done that, you can then finish out the message here. Uh, I don't think there is a correct choice here. Or maybe uh, what you want to say is that I think that there's more than one right answer. And uh, send the message. And I'll eventually see it. And um, I'll address it. Um, so that's why the message instructor option is available there. I definitely, I, I don't think anyone expects me to be providing help within the 10 minutes of your assessment time. So you have that one attempt. And um, I hope when I click on review work, so the test student account is a real student account as far as my open math is concerned. I, oh, all right, so um, I need to fix this, okay. Um, it wasn't supposed to do this, uh, so <laughs> go in and fix this. <laughs> uh, I thought I view their work. Uh, uh, so it should be never. Uh, never? Yeah, I guess it should be. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, view their work after the assessment version is submitted. View their scores, it should be never. Um, all right. <laughs> so that's the. That's the setting I meant to have. And actually, while I'm doing that, let me do the same thing for here. I think uh, that's why some people were getting confused on the SA one, because, um, so with the SA questions, by the way, you the automatic score will be zero. Uh, I have to manually grade it. So when you get zero on the SA, that doesn't mean that you did anything wrong. It just means I haven't graded it yet. Um, and uh, while I'm on this screen, you see what I see here. I get your messages this way. Um, this is the message from test the student, which is a real uh, student account. So let me um, go back to this assessment and review it. And I now, so I can take it one more time and it should allow me to review my work, but it doesn't tell me what I got right or wrong. So, so, um, so from having done the assessment once, you should at least know what the score is. The system tells you that your score was whatever. And if, uh, um, and if you're happy with that, you don't need to retake it, but you can retake it one more time. And as it says here, no penalty. Um, it's just a, and the system will automatically take the higher of the two scores. So, um, so let me retake it and um, 
kind of this time go through it a little bit more thoroughly. And my goal will be to get 100%. And uh, I'm just going to open up to the possibility that I could uh, be making mistakes. But uh, before I retake, I want you to kind of see what the, um, what the first question was. So this was the first question of my first attempt. It was about explanation of retrograde motion. And when I retake attempt, there's a very good chance that uh, this will not be the first question. In fact, there's a, uh, also still a good chance that this question won't even be one of the 10 questions. It's because each time you take this timed assessment, the questions will be randomized. So um, maybe up to about five of the questions might be something that you have seen before. So some questions, you'll see it on both attempts. Uh, some questions, uh, you, will, you will see only on one of the attempts. It's a, the whole set of 10 questions is re-randomized. So let me do retake and I'll try to do it within 10 minutes and try to get 100% here. So retake, uh, start. All right, yeah, first question, it definitely wasn't about the retrograde motion. So let me just go through here. Uh, by the way, there's a timer here, um, which, um, you know, will tell you about the 10 minutes that you have. So statement, which correctly explains Kestab on the exclusive geocentric. I think that was about the center of motion that moves. Uh, yeah, centers of motion that are themselves in motion. Uh, if you were to drive to south, uh, so, I remember this from homework question, and uh, from the homework question, the answer depends on uh, where you are, because you could be in the southern hemisphere, and the celestial pole in your sky could be the southern, uh, uh, south celestial pole, then as you drive south, it'll go up. So I hope you remember that from homework. Um, to the same with you, how Judea constellations are different, they are along the ecliptic. So yes, this is the correct choice, I think. <laughs> I'm going a little bit fast, so if I miss the one or two, I hope you, uh, I don't lose too much face from that. Just the statement below, one of, maybe, uh, I think this is a bit of a difficult question. Um, so, but let me try to be careful here. So heliocentric model, it wasn't demonstrably superior. It, it was a simpler and more elegant, but uh, the accuracy wise, those two are similar until Kepler came along uh, because yeah, this is just a made up story. Uh, this is another made up story. Uh, I like to call these a uh, joke uh, choices. Um, it, you'd only think this is correct if you didn't read the book. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so with some adjustments, the old Ptolemaic system accounted for the motions of the planets, although with a substantial complexity. So uh, this is uh, why it was uh, difficult to switch over to heliocentric model right away, because the old geocentric model still kind of worked. It wasn't completely broken. Um, I mean, you know, philosophically, it's not correct, but back then, people didn't know that yet. Okay. Choose one of the correct reasons Copernicus might have had for developing a completely new system. Um, okay. Um, yeah, this is one of the harder questions. Um, and I will come back and explain that even these harder questions, you have a chance of getting it right based on studying your homework. Uh, after I finish this, I'll show you why. And the uh, Copernicus's reason was this one, that heliocentric model was a simpler and more elegant and reproduced the results of Ptolemaic model. Uh, the, the rest are made up. Um, solar calendar has 365 de uh, days. Oh, wait, wait, how many degrees does the sun move? Okay, so uh, the sun complete to one complete circle in 365 days. One complete circle is 360 degrees. So each day moves by about one degree. Uh, there was also a homework question that had you do this calculation. Um, this one, uh, from having done the homework question, I remember that this should be what I should be looking for, the, uh, the altitude of the celestial pole. It should be equal to the latitude of the geographic location. Um, 
flaw in the Copernical model. It's that he assumed that uh, the planets went in uh, perfect circles so under a uniform circular motion uh, at the same speed. That's not it. He did realize that inner planets were faster. Um, so I uh, assume the planter which took the shape of uniform circular motion. Yeah, he largely predicted the where planets would appear. He got the different speeds right. He got the retrograde motion, but their exact positions weren't right. So there was a substantial error. Um, correctly matches, okay. Second law says, uh, that one sounds like a third law thing. The first law says, no, that's the second law. The first law says, uh, planetary ellipses on it, one of the folks, okay. By the way, um, this is one question. Uh, the choices are dynamically generated. When and if you get this question on your assessment, you probably won't see this exact same choices because they are dynamically generated. Um, choose the statement below, which most correctly explains. Um, he, uh, right after him was Galileo, who uh, he didn't invent the telescopes, but he uh, popularized the telescopes. So yeah, the first part is explaining what Tycho did. And the second part is saying, uh, yeah, after him, people just use telescopes because they have telescopes. All right, uh, I hope I got everything right. And do I have time? I have five minutes left. Now, if you do run out of time, so the system saves your work as you go. When and if you run out of time, the system will allow you to click on submit button. And if it somehow doesn't, I can actually do that on your behalf too. So, um, so as long as your internet connection is reliable, uh, not too much worries about the, you know, the work getting lost. It, should get, be getting saved and the system should allow you to submit it. So let's submit it and hope I got 100%. Uh, I, I hope I got 100%, but uh, okay, good. <laughs> so it's not so embarrassing. All right, um, so that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, you have two attempts, so I'm hoping the first attempt will kind of give you a bit of a practice for the second one. I see a question in the chat window that's what this um, thing is about, let me see. Um, so, oh yeah, that's a good question. The question says, are the timed assessment questions always the same as what we see in the module and the questions? Let me demonstrate um, with my instructor account. So here's my instructor account. And I can show you how I came up with these uh, questions you see in your, you are going to see in your timed assessment. They are always derived from your module and the questions. So let me, in this view, let me go into questions. And uh, by the way, this is how the whole thing is dynamically generated. Um, it, I use question pools. So there's two groups, uh, one taking from chapter two questions, and there's you know 18 questions there. There's questions taking from chapter three. There are four questions there. The system chooses two and eight. Um, randomly, that's how you see those questions. And you see all of these are kind of labeled the test bank version. And let me click on preview to show all these questions. They are derived from uh, another question here. And um, if you have access to this, you can see that this is one of the module and the questions. So all of these questions that I have in the multiple choice timed assessment, they are a test bank version of the questions that you had in the uh, module and the question. So in the case when it was a multiple choice question in the first place, it's basically the same multiple choice question. Uh, questions like these ones, they were probably a multiple answer questions on the uh, uh, module and the questions. And I had to basically create a, um, create a, a multiple choice version of it. Um, and so, um, so like this one, I guess I can demonstrate with this one. So obstacles for acceptance of a Copernical heliocentric model. This one says three versions in one. So when you get a multiple choice version, it looks like this. And each time I generate a new version, uh, it'll kind of look a little bit different. 
um, it chooses kind of the one of the three correct choices and puts that as the correct choice. So right now it's that, that one. And in a new version, you could stay that one. Okay. So I regenerate enough at some point, it'll choose a different one. So let me go to the, uh, it says it's derived from this question, 440417. Let me see what the homework uh, version of that was. So let me leave that there. I'm gonna open a new window and go to the questions here. Uh, I forgot the number. So uh, derived from 440417. Okay, it's this question that it was derived from. And this is what I hope you remember saying in your, in your uh, homework assignment. Uh, that you had a lot of time to work on. And having gone through it and understood it, all the correct choices, um, that's what I'm hoping you, uh, will prepare you for the timed assessment. So, so yeah. Um, so in between your attempts, I do recommend that you study. And the way you should study is by reviewing your uh, it, it, reviewing your module and the questions because all of the multiple choice questions are here. They come from your module and the questions. I made sure that I didn't, uh, I didn't invent a new question from nothing. It, they all come from, uh, now for some of the questions, I do have to change it quite substantially because um, I forget where did I put the, um, oh yeah, so like a question like this one here. So this was a question where um, you had to actually calculate the numbers. And when questions like these are made into multiple choice version, then it looks a little bit different. Um, so, but um, even though that multiple choice version is still based on this question, meaning that if you uh, understood this question, you did it well, you understood kind of what you're doing, then you should do fine on the uh, multiple choice version of that question. So, 